Hey guys, it's Vention. I uh, haven't made a video lately. Sorry. <laughs> I'm curr currently uh, doing a little light reading. Surviving the Economic Collapse by that guy named Fairfowl. And I'm at the same time doing a little work on my electric bicycle. This thing is powerful, let me tell you. It screams up the hills. But I'm, I bought a few springs and I'm going to uh, make a better suspension system for these, for these batteries because they are just taking too much of a pounding. Um, the main reason for this video is to make a garden video. Now, first of all, <laughs> I'm embarrassed by the way it looks out there because it is ugly. <laughs> That's my little cucumber plant, the only survivor. A couple of strawberries, some old bolted lettuce from last year, lettuce, alfalfa, and uh, more lettuce, some peas that died, <laughs> and my tomatoes. This is the composting tomato planter. Basically you, uh, you plant the seedling at the very bottom and then uh, throw, com throw kitchen scraps in there and they just cover it up with a little bit of dirt and then gradually the soil builds up and uh, and the, uh, the n massive nitrogen released by the rotting compost is immediately useful by the uh, tomato plants and uh, basically it retains water and all that good stuff and they just take off it's kind of counterintuitive. Supposedly raw compost is bad for plants, but tomatoes can handle it. So all of my kitchen scraps are going right into these buckets. And then of course they are self-watering planters. So um, I only have to water them once a week. So there's a theory to what I'm doing. Let me see if I can explain it to you. You see, um, the alfalfa in the boxes um, is designed to cover the soil. Whenever you have bare soil, according to the principle of permaculture, bad things happen. Weeds and uh, you get nutrients being washed out and stuff like that. But basically, um, I plan to keep alfalfa in those planters all year long. And basically, the the plants have these little branches and all that and leaves and uh, basically they've got a root system as well and it's about equal to their top and oh sorry I'm not <laughs> okay but basically um, this is my pathetic rendition of alfalfa <laughs> now uh, alfalfas Alfalfa is a nitrogen fixing plant. Basically, uh, you can uh, use it to build soil w even when you're not uh, when you're not uh, growing it, right? What you do is you just wait till it gets like maybe four inches, five inches tall if it's in a little deck planter like mine, and uh, you just cut off the top third or so. And then take all of that alfalfa and just throw it on the soil and it becomes mulch. And uh, at that same time, when you chop the top part of, part of it off, the uh, plant is then out of balance and then it sheds the root structure like so. And it drops about a third of the roots off and those little nitrogen nodules and everything drop into the soil and supercharge the soil with... Uh, nitrogen that plants can use and uh, it also um, the um, nutrients and other minerals and whatnot that that the alfalfa has managed to dig out of the soil is more readily available available in the roots and in the and in the uh, rotting mulch on the surface right and it covers the soil which is also a highly cool thing keeps the uh, weeds down keeps keeps the water from being uh, um, from leaching the nutrients out and it keeps the uh, it, it basically um, 
keeps the soil moist, right? Because you know how sometimes when you have garden soil, then you get some hot weather and the soil turns to sort of a clay-like rock material? And plants, they can't hardly deal with that. But if you have the, the alfalfa covering the, uh, the surface, right? And you have uh, the mulch of the uh, alfalfa on the, on the surface of the dirt, um, then you would get less uh, rotting, or you, I'm sorry, you'd get less drying, right? So uh, that means you have to water, you don't have to water as it is often. And if you water with like city water, conceivably you could get salts and fluoride and all kinds of nasties building up in the soil. Well, this, that's all well and good, but uh, what I plan to do also, and what I've seen done before on a couple of videos, <laughs> is um, once I, uh, here's the ground right there, once, when it's time to plant something like lettuce or whatever I want to plant, what I would do is I would just chop the area where I'm going to put the seeds in or the little, little seedlings in and uh, chop it down to the ground, right? And then when that happens, and of course I'll drop the, the mulch on the ground, then drop my seeds in, and those roots immediately die, right? Um, or most of it dies, even if the plant still survives and sends a shoot up, right? The, all of that root material is dropped into the soil right there, and that dumps a ton of nitrogen, boom, right into the soil that your seed that you've planted or your little plant that you've planted is ready to uh, immediately take that uh, nutrients and run with it, and then you got uh, good garden produce coming up. So basically my plan is to uh, have all of my planters totally covered with that alfalfa cover crop. And then I will uh, chop out little sections. I'll do the chop, chop and drop all year. And then I'll chop off little sections when I want to plant into it. Now... This obviously isn't the best, fastest, most productive way to run a garden on your deck, but it's educational because I plan to use something similar to that when I when I use hugel culture beds when I finally get my uh, when I finally get my property. I'm still saving. <laughs> I just bought another thirteen hundred in silver and jammed it in the safe deposit box. For now, I think it's that's the safest place. But anyway, a hugel culture bed is pretty cool. Here's the side view. It's like a giant raised bed garden. Some of them can be like six feet tall. And inside you've got logs, big logs and uh, sticks and branches and any kind of wood that you can find. Jam it, I mean just stack it up and then cover it with dirt. Then in the uh, winter time, the rain comes down and it soaks up in these logs and it... Uh, and the logs act, they start to rot, and they act as a sponge. Now, um, they are, basically when you have compost or rotting, if you have a lot of carbon, it actually absorbs nitrogen. And you can use carbon, like sticks and whatnot, and dead grass, uh, to, uh, to basically stabilize compost. And, but basically, if you have a lot of carbon, it will suck the nitrogen out and sort of bond with the nitrogen. So, uh, so basically, uh, that the first year when you do a hugel culture bed, you uh, have to like mulch heavily and uh, have a good nitrogen fixing cover crop like alfalfa, and uh, and then basically uh, you can uh, grow something. But these logs will be sucking the nitrogen out of the soil the first year, but the second year it really takes off and. Uh, the coolest thing is even in places like Montana or uh, hot places like possibly, uh, you know, like Arizona, um, in some places you don't even have to water it at all. Like uh, in Mo they can do it in Montana. And uh, a guy named Sepp Holzer, who's like really a serious permaculture guy from, uh, from uh, Europe somewhere, <laughs> But anyway, he uh, he does all this uh, hugel culture stuff, and he did it in the desert. Doesn't have to water it at all, and he can just grow insane crops on it. 
But anyway, your tomatoes or whatever just shoves a root down into that rotten log, and then they have all the water they want throughout the entire uh, throughout the entire uh, season. So I plan to do the Hugo culture thing once I get my place. But um, currently, I'm going to uh, basically just cover the uh, cover all exposed soil with uh, with that alfalfa. And it's kind of difficult because birds eat it, so I cover it up and uh, throw those little cages over it. And then it uh, keeps the birds off long enough for the alfalfa to get a couple inches tall. Then the birds don't seem to bother it. But when they're seeds, man, those birds will <laughs> eat those seeds. But that's cool because, I mean, it doesn't matter too much because, geez, I've got sprouting alfalfa that I eat every day. <laughs> So I guess I could share a little bit with the birds. <laughs> so that's the plan. Um, the composting tomato planters are going like gangbusters as always. These, this thing I've done it like three years in a row and it's never failed me once. Tomatoes, huge amounts of tomatoes. And uh, they, these things, these plants, they only get sun in the uh, late afternoon. Otherwise, it's just like indirect sun. And tomatoes are supposed to really need a lot of sun, but they seem to be uh, going pretty hard. Cherry tomatoes are in the small one. And, I mean, that the small one is a cherry, and the other one is a slightly bigger one that looks about the size of a large plum, maybe. They're sort of oval shape. I can't remember what they're called. Well, anyway, uh, so I've got two varieties there. So that's the plan. Uh, fixing nitrogen, covering the soil with the alfalfa, and then uh, hopefully I can put the new get the nutrients in those planters uh, stabilized, and then I can. Uh, grow without fertilizer and I I really don't use fertilizer as you can tell <laughs> but hopefully I'll be able to not use fertilizer and have some good results at the same time this one planter here that I have the uh, lettuce in is uh, is a is from the composting tomato planter last year so it's got pretty good soil but the other planters there are the soil is kind of tired so uh, it's either put fertilizer in it or uh, or basically uh, just tolerate low production. Um, supposedly, according to the principles of permaculture or some of the wisdom, the, that area of knowledge uh, um, has, uh, if you put a lot of fertilizer and water and everything in your plants, they have a tendency to swell up because fertilizer has a salt component. And you know what happens when you take a lot of salt as a person. Uh, you have a tendency to gain weight, maybe retain water, and uh, you're just not as healthy. But anyway, when that when plants sort of engorge like that, they uh, they tend to attract pests. So then you have to spray <laughs> insecticide, which is something I haven't had to do yet. Um, I just go out there and pick off a little something here and there. I've got spittle bugs, but that's about the only only thing and they're easy to pick off. Uh, spittle bug is a little thing that looks like this foam and it's about a half inch to three quarters inch wide and it uh, it basically uh, um, it's the bugs hiding inside that foamy material. So that's the plan I'll let you know how it goes um, so later. <laughs>